Hi everyone, it's Kate. I'm here today to show you how to make journal cards from this wildflower book I bought on Amazon. The book is called Wildflowers, a Britain month by month, and it's by Margaret Erskine Wilson. It's a pretty interesting book. You can see I've already started to cut into it. Um, you can see it was $8.99 in pounds. I don't remember exactly what it was on Amazon, but I think around $10. And the book is full of watercolor paintings that this woman did and she donated them to the Natural History Society um, when she passed away and so these are all of her watercolor illustrations and the reason why she started making these was she had a friend who told her that maybe if you painted the flowers that the friend would learn what the flowers were called so Margaret went ahead and painted all the wildflowers that basically she could come in contact with. And this book is all of her paintings. And they're kind of organized by um, what month the flower could be found in. So what month the flower blooms in. Um, she did this all over Britain. Um, there's many different flowers in here. On the sides of the book is some more information. For our purposes today, we're just going to be cutting these out as they are, and we're going to be turning them into something that looks like this. So these are some that I made the other day. And they're just really cute little journal cards. They're easy make, so let's get started. We just need to pick a page or two that we want to use. So I'll go back up here to the beginning where I started. And for me today, I'm just going to take a craft knife and cut out a couple. Um, you can take out signatures if you want to. Um, you know, if you want to sew them into one of your journals. Today I'm just going to take a craft knife and cut out a couple of pages. Give us a couple of options here. I'm not an Amazon um, affiliate yet, however, I plan on being in the future, so depending on when you watch this video, I might be. I am going to link the book um, in the description box so that you can just click the link and go find it. Um, Amazon affiliate links, uh, they give you a tiny little commission. It's a couple cents when somebody buys something, so it's not like a whole lot of money, but anyway, it's there. I'll link the book so that you can easily find it. Um, Also, the, the book does have an IS, um, ISBN code, if you're looking for that. Um, I'll put that up in the description box below for you, too. And so these are beautiful pages. Um, just need to choose a couple. Let's go with these ones. Put this one off to the side. Bring in the paper trimmer. Kind of cramped here. <laughs> I got out all the supplies for today so we wouldn't have to go digging for anything. All right, so just line up the paper. And so I'm just going to cut out the rectangle where the watercolor painting is and use that as the front of my journal card. I'm going to back it with some copy dyed paper. And you'll see on the first, um, first ones I made, I actually made the back into a postcard with some postcard stamps. I don't think we're going to do that today. I kind of like them more nature um, specimen cards. But you make whatever you want to make. You can make journal cards. You can make postcards. This is what I'm talking about. So later, when I first made it, I didn't have this tab on here. I added the tab later. 
but you can see that I stamped this as a postcard, put a stamp on here. I actually stamped over that stamp to cancel it. I sewed around it. So today I'm not going to do the postcard part of it, but it's just coffee dyed paper that I've kind of inked up on there. And then I went back later and added this little specimen tab that uh, is a Tim Holtz stamp. And so basically we have the card that I sewed around. I added the butterfly sticker. I added some um, neutral fabric here, and when I tore the fabric out to layer the labels onto it, I kept all the little strings and kind of tucked them behind, so that little messy string look, I kind of liked that. This is a Tracy Fox label, and so that's kind of how I'm going to make them today, is without the postcard back, just with the front done. That way somebody can write on there, I guess, and it won't look like a postcard. Okay, so we have our first one cut out. Let's cut out the next one. They're pretty quick to make when I'm not filming and I'm just, you know, going. It's a lot faster. I think you could probably make 10 or 12 journal cards in an hour. Maybe more, depending on how fast you are. I'm also not going to sew on camera today. Um, I don't have my filming set up with my sewing machine yet um, in the future, but I don't really like to listen to the sewing machine whenever I'm watching videos anyway, so you probably don't either. Next one. So just cut them all down. When I buy books to, you know, tear them apart, especially if I'm buying a new book, from Amazon or wherever. I do like to read the book before I, you know, tear it apart and take the pages out. Um, I just feel like, you know, if I am going to buy the brand new book, I might as well read it first. So I did give this one a read. It's not very much text to read. It's mostly just looking, I mean, it's it's 99% just looking at the, the pictures. However, it was interesting to read about the woman and all of the different things that she did and um, she was a teacher for a while, for most of her life, actually, and uh, her travels, and apparently she uh, would travel and take her watercolors out to the field with her and just, and just uh, paint them right, you know, as they are. I thought that was kind of cool. Where I live, I live in the desert, so we don't really get... <laughs> We have some wildflowers, but they're very deserty in nature. We don't get, you know, the English gardens that a lot of people have. Um, we're limited in what we can grow. I don't really like cactuses, so um, and my front yard is full of cactuses, but <laughs> that's not something that I would necessarily choose, you know, uh, in the future. I do wish I could grow wildflowers or flowers in general. But the cactuses get flowers sometimes. Alrighty. All that cut down. So this is what we're left with. And then you have to decide which, you know, which, which picture. Which picture, which side are you going to use? Oh, they're all so pretty. I don't know. <laughs> right? That's the hard part. Because you have to sacrifice a side. That one's very interesting. Oh, I might like that side of that one. Okay, so then we're going to need some copy dyed paper. And we're going to glue them down. Pretty simple. Nothing too technical. Sorry, I got quiet there. <laughs> so I have a big collection of nature books, and um, they're my favorite books to use in junk journals, which is what I primarily make these days. And so um, 
this one is a new edition. I don't remember where I saw it. Maybe Amazon recommended it to me, which is kind of what they've been doing lately. They know if they recommend it to me, then I usually go and buy it, right? <laughs> so, um, I do have a lot of nature books. That side is actually prettier. Let's do that side. And then, um, for my nature books, uh, it's really hard buying them online. Like, even when you go to buy this book on Amazon, it doesn't show you the inside of the book. It might show you one or two pictures, but it's really hard buying books for, you know, specifically the images. So, whenever I, you know, watch YouTube videos, there will be people, and they actually do um, show the insides of the books, which is something that makes me, you know, feel confident that, okay, you know, it's worth me buying it, you know, that kind of thing. That was a terrible job. It's already drying. Like I said, I'm in the desert, so this glue dries super fast. If I don't get it down right straight away, it doesn't stick. Let's see if I can get it lined up this time. Okay. And then there's a tiny little bit of white showing there that we'll trim off later. So with my collection of nature books, what I'm trying to get at is um, if you guys would like, I think I probably just should do it because somebody eventually will watch it and think it's nice. But, you know, um, I can film my nature book collection and show flip throughs of all the pages so that you guys will know. You know, if you see a specific title out there, that it's something that is worth buying or not buying to use in junk journals. Because for me, um, I don't like to buy a book unless I can use, you know, at least half of it. I don't want to just buy a book that has, you know, a couple of pages I can use. I want to buy a book that, you know, I can use at least half of it on a project. So we'll leave this last, um, we'll leave this last card. We'll see how many more we need. So I'll film the books, I'll flip through all of them, and then that way you guys can see the insides. I have some really nice bird books, um, as well as flower books. I have butterfly books. Maybe we should trim that down with a trimmer. Plus, I'm just going to cut it, but I'll just cut it with the trimmer. Save my little tiny scrap of copy dye there. All right, so let's cut these with the trimmer so that I can hopefully get them straight. And they always curl up when you stick them on, but they do flatten back out later. Just a little extra copy dye on the edges. I guess you could glue them down before you cut out the image. I just don't like to waste the copy dyed paper. I guess I need to scoot up so that I'm in frame. Sorry about that. I know I'm always being way too careful with, you know, <laughs> cutting the edges perfectly square and straight, which they never really are when I'm done anyway, but I try so hard and honestly, I really don't need to. With the inking that I'm going to do, it's going to be hardly noticeable anyway, if you're off a tiny little bit. Alrighty, we're good to go there. So what kind of books do you guys like to use? Do you guys have a favorite nature book that you guys like to use? For making journal cards or tags or whatever you're into, collage, something like that? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm always looking to add more to my collection. You guys know that. <laughs> Alrighty. So next we need to get the Tracy Fox labels and we need to put them... Let's see. These are my labels tiny little cutout labels. Tracy has a lot of really good ones. Um, I specifically am using her definitions today, her nature definitions. So 
we have quite a few to choose from. Let's see. I don't know if we want to put red on there. Maybe. Maybe we could put the brown one on there. Let's see what else we have. There's a green. Maybe a different brown. Maybe an orange instead. No, oh, I kind of like the red. Red or orange on that one. There's... Sorry, I'm always off camera. There's some more of her labels. So this is what I'm choosing from here. There's a smaller red one. Hmm. What do you guys think? I think we'd like brown on that one. I don't know. We don't need to really hem and haw about it too much. I do wish there was a pink one. All I've got is brown and red and blue. Um, yeah. Maybe we could try blue, but that wouldn't be terrible there. Maybe we'll do a blue one. And then maybe we should put brown on that one. No. Green. Hmm. Choices, choices, choices. Just need to make a decision, right? So I guess we're going with that. I printed these labels out from Tracy Fox on cardstock. And I use a laser printer if that helps anyone. Alright. Get out a wet wipe just in case. I think we're planning on doing some stamping too, if we do tabs on them. So, I have torn some fabric. Um, my chair makes noises when I move around. <laughs> so this is my bundle of fabric that I keep at hand, just so that I can cut off pieces whenever, you know, I'm making a project like this. And I cut some of this beige um, oatmeal colored fabric. It's kind of a loose weave, it's very textural. Okay, so these are my fabric strips, and we're just going to mount the labels, the little Tracy Fox labels, onto the fabric here. And I like to leave a little extra so that I can make it um, fray a little bit more. And then with this fabric, you kind of got to straighten it out afterwards. And then that's our little piece there. All the strings everywhere. I'm going to ink around this label first before I glue it down. And I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. And I like to ink mine quite a bit. Like, I prefer more grungy than less grungy. And I even get a little on the front, like right here. I will distress that a little bit. <laughs> Maybe that was too much, but anyway, there we go. So that's that one. Then we have this one. I'm just gonna lay it out. And then give it a snip. And tear it. This fabric tears pretty well. We have some that don't. And ink around them. And then I'll kind of ink a little bit here and there. Ink a little bit more. I just kind of like mine more uh, stressed. And we're going to deal with those strings in just a minute. In the first ones I made, I put the strings behind it. I think we're going to have enough strings to do that, but we'll see. And then this one, I just want to take it and ink it just a little bit. And I did too much again. 
<laughs> oh, we say just a little bit. All right. Let's set that off to the side and cut this one. All right. So all of these strings I'm going to save and we're going to stick behind these tags. And for this newly torn um, edge here, where it wasn't already frayed, I'm just going to fray it a little bit more. All right, that piece is ready to go. So just kind of figure out where where you want to stick it, what you can, you know, live with covering up, which is sad that we have to cover up any of it, but uh, I'm using Fabri-Tac to put this on. And for me, these little strings, I might not want all of that. I just kind of put it in my fingers and work it until it's, you know, a nice little bundle. And I'm going to lay it on there. I like a little coming out the bottom and a little coming out the top. I like it to be pretty messy looking. That's pretty good. And then we're just going to fabric tack this label onto there. Come on, fabric tack. Put my fabric tack in these little sugar bell bottles that everyone was putting it in for a while there it seems to work pretty well that way um, i haven't really had a problem with it drying up yet i will say that if you don't use it for a long time it probably will fabric tack is not my favorite glue it's very smelly <laughs> it smells more like uh, fingernail polish remover so right now I'm just putting it to the fabric and then I'm going to come back and put this label on. Kind of generous there with the Fabri-Tac. And put it right on there. And there we go for that one. And then this one. So that newly torn edge that I just did, I want to fray a little bit. And you just kind of pick out the little pieces of, of uh, string. Straighten it back out. That looks pretty good. Excuse me for a second while I get some water. So dry here in the desert. Ah, oh, thank you. All right. So for this one, I want these really big strings. I have another piece of fabric here that I can just pull some off of. And then just kind of wrap them up however you want to make a little messy bit there. Put it on. Again, we want more showing than not showing because you know the label's going to cover up a bit of it. So. Just kind of work with it a little bit. That looks pretty good. My fabric tack is bubbling up. <laughs> I don't know if there's another alternative that would be better though. Fabric tack is pretty good for fabric stuff. I just don't like the smell of it. That's all. <laughs> anyway, that's my preference. So then put that down and we're going to glue the back of it. And there we go. And I don't glue all the way to the edge. I leave a little space because I want this to be kind of, you know, um, a little bit loose so that the fabric can move around a little bit. I don't want it falling off or anything like that. but. And I'm going pretty much in the same spot with all of these. You put them wherever you want them. If you want them high, this one might have been better high. But you put them wherever you want to put them. There's that one. 
And now we're on to this one. They're pretty quick. Get another string or two. You don't have to put the strings, it's just something I'm doing. Um, I just kind of like the messy look. Yep, that'll work just fine. Try to remember to lay my bottle down so that it doesn't take me an hour every time. Alright, and then there's that. This one says nature. Let's see. Kind of need to free that a little bit more. That must have been the one I just tore. And then that one can go down. I mean, we could try moving it up. I don't know if I like it up. Huh. <laughs> I guess I just like it at the bottom. And then for butterfly stickers, um, you can use, you know, things, fussy cut butterflies that you've already cut out. For today, um, what I used on the first ones and today, I just used butterfly stickers that are like washi stickers. So that one's pretty much center there and it's got its little little strings hanging out. I think the strings are neat. They just add another layer of texture to me. That's a little crooked. Luckily faber gives us a minute. So this is where we're at. We got them all on there. They're starting to dry. So let's wipe off this faber bottle. And then I put the knitting needle caps on um, from Hobby Lobby, these little plastic silicone caps that just kind of go on there to keep it from drying out. This is my art glitter glue and I have the same, the other knitting, knitting needle cap on it. I don't know. I think it helps a little bit. I don't know if it's better than the original caps that come with the bottles, but anyway, Let's find some butterfly stickers to put on these guys. So this is my book of um, butterfly stickers. It's got butterflies, mushrooms, and some other things. I just made it out of some heavy um, chipboard and some scrap of paper I wasn't going to use, some ribbon, that kind of thing. Um, it's got pages of butterflies. I buy these little butterfly stickers off of Amazon, um, off of Etsy, eBay. There's a whole bunch of sellers. They do come from China, most of them. Um, some of these ones are the Tim Holtz wings, but most of them come from China. I know they're pretty much all over the internet, so you probably won't have a hard time looking for them if you just search for um, washi butterflies. I can try to find some links for Amazon. So this one, they are oversized butterflies. Um, for the florals, obviously, it's not really lifelike, but um, I still think they look pretty nice. Uh, if you need green or something. Yeah. So basically we just go through and, you know, try to find some nice looking butterflies. I will see that it is kind of difficult to find red or reddish colored butterflies. They have some, but see that guy would need to be right there. He's not bad there. Um, let's keep looking and see what else I can find. I mean, there's clear, like, whitish. Yellow with the red body. That one might not be bad. Let's take a look at that. Rachel calls this auditioning, right? <laughs> auditioning? I kind of like that guy. It's a good use for him. He's kind of, um, you know, how they sit, how they sit on a branch, and so their wings are together. Um, I have this one, or either of these actually might be nice. That guy. I don't know, guys. Tell me which one. 
right? Tell me which one. What about this guy? He's not bad. It's that guy. That guy. Or that guy. I think he's just too big. Like, I don't think I can get him on there. So he's not in the running anymore. Let's see. And I'm putting him here, but, you know, he could he could be up here somewhere. Maybe he is up there. I don't know. I just think he covers up too much of the flowers if I move him up there. So that one. Or that one. I think it's this guy. I think it's the first one we picked. Sorry it takes so long. <laughs> but yeah. Butterfly stickers from Amazon, Etsy. They're washy butterfly stickers, most of them. This guy is um, washy. Washy. They're all washy today. They do have some shiny ones, though. That um, are like mylar backed. So let's go ahead and stick these on. I will say that these little stickers that you get from China have notoriously hard to find and peel off backings. <laughs> Sorry. I might have, yes, okay. And so I kind of envision him up here somewhere. I have ink all over my fingers. So let's put him there. I kind of, I guess, like to match my uh, label color with my butterfly. You do whatever, you know, you like. But if you did an audition for as long as I did with, you know, butterflies and whatnot, it definitely would be a faster make. And if you could get these backings off. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, so close. Do you guys have uh, hints for taking off backings of stickers? So where do we see him? Do we see him up this way? Maybe? Oh my goodness. Some of these really don't want to come off. I don't know, maybe I could use tweezers. Yeah, so if you guys have any hints for me of how to ease, how to make it easier to take off the backings of stickers. They have these little, um, there's thin plastic backings on them. They're not like a sticker sheet where you could just bend it and peel it, you know? There we go. Sorry about that. And then, so this one, maybe he's kind of sitting up here in this, this flower, like that. So then I just make sure they're down there. I don't usually glue over the washi stickers unless they're giving me a problem. Like if they're lifting up, then yeah, I definitely glue them. So we will distress all of this. And so for the labels that are there and the strings, I kind of like to go back over it and even touch up a little bit of the strings and the little bit of the, you know, label. I just like it to look a little more worn, a little more old. So this label says vegetation. This label here says nature. You can see I got the strings a little bit. See the difference between, you know, edging the distressing with distress um, ink, the vintage photo, over the fabric and not. I like it to go over the fabric just a little bit. The fabric, the strings, you can get the corners. I definitely err on the side of grungy. And then we're going to distress the whole card. And you'll see with this too, like you, you can do just the edge, just the very, very edge, or you can even go in a little bit, which is what I usually do. So 
All right, so this one, we just want to kind of start at the corner and just go in just a little bit. Um, I don't have the round blending brush on. If I did, it's a little easier to go in without leaving so many marks. And then up here where this guy is like super white, I'm just going to go over him the whole entire sticker and then just kind of over the whole card loosely. This one has a tiny piece of paper sticking over, so I'm just going to cut that off. Tiny piece of coffee paper. And then I am going to sew around these. Like I said, I won't do it on camera because I don't have it set up to do that right now, but I don't know. Do you guys like watching sewing when you watch videos? Is it boring? Is it too loud? I'm always worried about that. You know, like people thinking, oh, you know, I'm trying to fall asleep. I don't want to hear your sewing machine. <laughs> so, yeah. And then same with this one. Like it, it's pretty, you know, light. And so I just, I just like to go over it just a little bit and just kind of, you know, bring that distress in a little. I think the distress actually makes the flowers, you know, the colors look a little little darker, more intense. I kind of like it. And then same with the butterfly. Just go over him just a little bit. All right. Next one. So you can see how you can make quite a few really cute looking little journal cards in a short amount of time. This one, I'm just going to go in just a little bit. I mean, it was a brand new book, so, you know, it's got a lot of, uh, a lot of lighter colored paper. And then I'm going to ink the book side. There's a lot of ink. <laughs> and I do go in on this side too, and I'll show you that. So I like to carry the ink just ever so slightly, not really like that, but <laughs> ever so slightly over it. Like that. And then I need to put the round um, domed foam on if I'm going to do that kind of inking. but. For this video, I didn't have it on. I like the domed foam, but I have so many of the other ones <laughs> that it's going to be a while before I can use it all. And when I sew around them, it'll catch any paper that's, you know, coming up or loose on the back. For the longest time, I didn't think I would like, you know, um, distressing all of my stuff that I make. And I don't distress everything. It depends on the journal that it's going in and the theme and all that. But for the longest time, I thought, you know, no, I'm not going to distress it. It just looks dirty and whatever. <laughs> and then um, I, you know, started making a lot more journals. And I really started liking the uh, inking the edges and distressing it way more <laughs> than I did in the beginning. It's funny how that changed for me. So anyway, that's our cards. Um, you can stop there or you can add a little tab here or there on the card. And I said, I'm going to sew around them. So that's how that one looked um, after I added this little tab. And the little tabs are just, um, I have some plain ones here. So I just, you know, punch out with the, with the little um, Stampin' Up tab punch. Um, using some old, uh, let's see, what do we have? We have kind of one that might match that. We have some scrap paper here. So, you know, for this punch, I just line it up, you know, whatever makes sense with the paper. I like to find, you know, 
the edges and make sure that I'm just within those edges. That way I get as much out of my piece of paper as possible. And um, yeah, they just fold in half like this. This is just regular paper. It's not cardstock. For this project, um, I think it's fine. It's not super thin. And then, you know, we'll just dress around it. I guess we could just put a tab on, you know, something like this. Um, I don't necessarily like the tab plain. It's not terrible. But I also stamped out these little um, Tim Holtz specimen labels on cream cardstock. And we can just dress that and put it on like this one. I guess we might as well just add some. I like the tabs. I'm liking them more and more the more I did. I didn't do them at first, but now I am. So let's just finish this one. And then I won't keep you forever doing tabs, but. And then I like to ink the edge out there on both sides. All right, and then let's ink this guy. You can see I have all of my punches packed away <laughs> because I bought shelves to hang all my punches um, on the wall behind my door in my craft studio. So I haven't hung the shelves yet and the punches are all packed away because I was like, oh, I'm only going to need like, you know, this one and this one. And of course, you know, I needed way more than that to leave out. So I couldn't find the tiny little circle hole punch that punches us out. So I had to cut it out by hand. And cutting circles is not my favorite thing to do, right? <laughs> it just really, um, when you know there's a punch out there somewhere, <laughs> it kind of frustrates me. So I just put a little bit of um, art glitter glue, make sure I've got it lined up there. And not crooked, hopefully. And then we're good to go with that. So yeah, I really need to get on putting those um, punch boards up, punch shelves up so that I can put my punches on them. I have hundreds and hundreds of punches and I can't use them right now because there's just no way to get to them, you know? How would you find which one you wanted without it being on a shelf? That's where I'm at. So we make sure that's straight. And then I'm going to ink it one more time, just a little bit where the edges are showing where it came together. And that's that one. So that's how I added the tabs to them. Pretty simple, just, you know, some scrap paper um, and the punch. Those are the two that have tabs. I probably will go back and add tabs to these ones. These are the first three that I made here that are sewn around. I think they're cute. I don't know that I would do the postcard back again, especially with a tab, but you could. Nothing wrong with it. It's just, I don't know. I think I'll just sew around these ones and we'll call it a day. I will add tabs to these and then sew around them. So that's it today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll show you the book one more time. I think, let me see how many pages there are. This is the book. I will link it above or below, like I said. I always want to say above, but it's always below, right? <laughs> so of the pretty pages um, with illustrations, there is 147 here. And I think it started at like five or something before I pulled out a bunch. So, you know, you're, you're going to lose one side of each page. So it's 70, basically 70 journal cards that you can get out of just this book, just using the rectangles as journal cards. I think it's a pretty good deal. I love the book. I think the flowers are to die for. I love the story, how she, you know, started watercoloring flowers for her friend so that her friend could identify the flowers that grew around her. I think that's a pretty cute story. There's even a picture in here in the front of the woman who... Margaret. So here's Margaret. Margaret Erskine Wilson. And she's sitting here in the nature, probably where she sat and painted a lot of times. Yeah. Beautiful book, though. Anyway, that's what I made today. Hope you guys like it. 
Um, I will leave all of my contact information in the box below also, my Etsy store, my um, email address if you want to contact me, and I'll leave the link for the book. Thanks for watching my video today, guys. Hope you make something beautiful, um, whatever you're doing in your craft room. I'm sure it's going to be beautiful, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.